Hi friends, today I'm going to demonstrate how to use a threading jig to cut wooden threads on a wood lathe. And the instruction I'm going to cover today it, it is generic and it, I'm going to be using a, an easy uh, threading jig, but the same tips that I've got would apply whether you're using a, a Bonnie Klein or a Simon Hope or, or a Baxter, uh, Baxter threading, threading jig. So if it's something you're interested in, keep watching. Hi y'all, Mike Peace Wood Turning. I'm passionate about wood turning and I'm here to share with you tips, tricks, and techniques to help you become a, a better turner and have more fun with your wood turning. If this is what you're interested in, please click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you won't miss any future videos. Let's start off talking about wood. Uh, you know, the, that's one of the advantages of a threading jig. You can cut most any kind of uh, hard hardwood, uh, cherry, oak, uh, what have you. Uh, the woods that you normally could not hand thread chase. The key to it is it needs to be dry. It should be tight knit or close close grained. Let's uh, talk about the difference between side grain and in grain. Uh, I make almost all my boxes out of out of in, in grain. You know, with the wood is running this direction. That's the direction that the cre uh, tree was uh, growing. This piece here happens to be out of mahogany, which is pretty soft, but it mills up uh, fairly nice with with uh, threads. Uh, you could use side grain. The problem is, is, is when we know wood moves, and when it moves, it's going to shift a little bit, and it's going to shift more with side grain than it would with with in grain. That's a little more uh, uh, even, and it's more likely to move in the, in the same direction, both the top and and the bottom. You want to use quarter sawn wood wherever possible, as shown in this uh, this drawing right here. So if it does move, it's more likely to move in a, in a consistent, even fashion. Before we get started using a jig, let me just uh, cover the basic components of the jig. Starting with, they they all have a 60 degree rotary uh, cutter. You can buy these separately, but they generally come with a jig. As shown in this this picture, this picture also shows one that's uh, was done in a machine shop in Great Britain that did not work real well. But they're generally out of high speed steel. They've got 60 degree angle. And they sell for 25, 35. Uh, $35 at uh, industrial machine type shops such as uh, MSC Direct. Uh, and then you have to have some way of fastening it into the headstock and we'll talk about that later. So it's acting like a router cutting that thread. Now then we have the jig. Now I've got two different jigs here showing two different styles. This is a, a jig I made. didn't work very well so I bought another one. Um, but let me talk about the basic components. They both have some type of base. Uh, this style, and this is similar to the Bonnie Klein or the Baxter, in that it fits tightly between the bedways and lines up parallel. Uh, the other style is the Simon Hope or the Easy Threading, where it fastens in a banjo. Uh, in either case, you want to make sure that it's, it's on center with a cutter, either by making sure the base is built up properly, or in this case, where it has a uh, height ring, you adjust it, fasten the height ring down, you don't ever have to worry about that again. Uh, in addition, the way it works is you're cutting the threads based on the lead screw threads. Uh, this is 10 threads per inch on this, uh, this lead screw, so it's going to cut a 10 threads per inch uh, thread. Uh, some, some jigs are, have come with interchangeable uh, lead screws for, for different sizes. They might be 20 or 12 or 8 or 16, what have you. Uh, this is a 20 uh, it's, it, it can be mounted in a, in a different different jig. You want to get one that's appropriate to you. I would say 16 is not a bad general uh, middle of the road size. I tend to prefer 10 threads per inch because I tend to make larger acorn boxes as shown here and the 10 threads per inch look appropriate on a larger box and they tend to handle wood movement uh, and handling and repeated use out of domestic hardwoods a little better than a 16 thread branch. Uh, the next thing we've got is the cross slide and, and that moves the entire threading jig into or away from the cutter whether you're turning the base or uh, or the lid of a box. Uh, in this case, this one uh, loosens. Yours may have a loosening uh, attachment. And then you're going to have some type of uh, knob that will allow adjustment forward and backwards so you can cut at the appropriate depth. This one, uh, one revolution here is one millimeter, which is uh, just about, 
is one millimeter. Uh, this this one that I made, it's in thousandths uh, of an inch, uh, and it moves moves forward and back by by turning the, the knob. So they operate the same way. Uh, in addition, the ones that mount between the bedways, I don't know if you can see this, they need to have a stop block that you lock down in order that when you go to test the threads, if you don't have enough room in here for your box uh, to, uh, for you to be able to move this, uh, the, the back out the uh, uh, lead screw, you may need to slide the entire jig back and you lose registration unless you have a stop block fastened down that will allow it to come right back and that's, that's very important. Uh, with the easy threading jig it works a, just a little bit uh, differently and I'll show you that in just a moment. In any case you tighten it after you get it set the appropriate uh, depth you can tighten it down no, no tightening on this uh, this one I've got. Another feature that most of them will have is some way to take care of any any slop in the lead screw. Uh, this one uh, you take a few Allen wrenches, uh, Allen grub screws loose and then you tighten this, uh, this nut on the side and that will take, take up some of the slop. And this one, this homemade one I've got, uh, you actually take a screwdriver, a uh, side screwdriver to get in here and, and adjust it on one side and that will tighten it up uh, on the screw and take care of slop. So in any case, they'll have, the different jigs will be handled a different way, but you need to make sure that you don't have any, any slop in, in, your, uh, in, your, in your lead screw. One of the last things they have in common is a nose piece that's appropriate to uh, to the chuck you're going to be be using. Uh, chucks, chucks are kind of heavy. Uh, what I prefer whenever I can is a threaded glue block and I'll have a, a link uh, to a video on how I, I tap these glue blocks but this is the ideal way because you can take them on and off, on and off and you always get perfect registration. Another consideration when you uh, when you do get your wood and you turn it around and you, you part it into, into two pieces, I would go ahead and make a witness mark for the grain orientation, make it a little easier when you're uh, matching the threads up to, that you can get it to, to fit. Uh, that's, uh, that can be done. Uh, personally, that's one of the reasons maybe why I enjoy large acorn boxes with contrasting wood. Uh, matching the grain is not a concern. Okay, let's briefly talk about mounting this, this cutter in the headstock. Uh, this has a 3 8 inch uh, shaft. Uh, these collets are fairly inexpensive, uh, maybe 12 bucks or so for a 3 8 inch. Uh, that's the ones with a Morse taper. Typically they'll come with your threading jig uh, and you just pop them in, but it's essential they're threaded for a 3 8 inch coarse rod. You need to make you a, some type of uh, draw bar, uh, here's an example of mine, that will thread in from the back and pull this uh, forward and, and lock it. Now another way to hold it could be a Jacobs chuck. You just need to make sure it's a, it's a Jacobs chuck that's threaded at the back for a, uh, a rod such as this one, in this case a quarter inch rod to fit on my uh, uh, mini, mini lathe. Uh, th there are some problems with this. It sticks out a little bit further than other uh, mechanisms which takes up on a mini lay that's shown in this picture takes up uh, a lot of lot of room. My favorite way of doing it, the way I'll do it in this uh, on this project is a collet chuck because I have one uh, mostly because it's just easy to get on and off. It's quicker and faster to get on and off than it is to use the uh, draw bar and and the uh, with the Morse taper uh, collet and you'll find yourself going from taking this off and putting it and putting a chuck back on here and refining your your piece or taking the threads down sometimes you'll go back and forth on those operations and taking this off uh, several times which brings up another uh, issue if you have two lathes it's very nice to do all your threading on the on your mini lathe and do your turning on the big lathe that's kind of a luxury but uh, keep that in mind when you're going to purchase that you want to purchase the um, size to fit the appropriate spindle, whether that's on your mini lathe or big lathe, uh, and use an adapter. Uh, so just just think through that a little bit on what size what size you're going to get. 
In this case, this large lathe is one and a quarter. My mini lathe is, uh, is one inch, but my mini lathe is dedicated to a bill buff system, so uh, I do everything by taking it on and off. Now, I'm not showing you how to thread a box, but I did want to show you the sequence that I use as shown in this, this flip chart. This is the sequence I learned from, from Richard Raffin. So the first thing I do is the lid. So once I turn the lid, hollow the lid, then I transfer it to, uh, to the threading jig. Uh, I want to mention one thing here. The walls have to be perfectly parallel, as shown in this illustration, because the threads, you don't want them to dovetail. Um, if you have to cut a recess in the back, as shown in this picture, uh, unless you have an opening in the back where it's, it's thicker back here than it is up front where the threads are, which is, is the best solution. And if you're doing a collar, for example, on a hollow form, you could just project it back. This will cut through into open space. Uh, but if you don't and you find yourself uh, in this first, first illustration where the cutter to cut threads, you're liable to be bumping the back of this. You might want to consider, as I show in this picture, mounting it in a drill chuck and then grinding off the front of this, uh, the, the front of your cutter to give you a little more room to cut threads just a, a bit deeper. If you got any questions, post them, post them in the comments below. Now with the, the jigs that fit the bedway, they're already lined up. You just want to get consistently pull them against one side of the bed weight, always keep them lined up. But with one that mounts in a banjo, it's a little bit trickier that you've got to get it perpendicular to the bed weight. And one of the tricks that, that I use is I use a, a speed square and, and kind of get back here and, and, or, or look straight down to, get, to see if it looks like it's, it's straight. The other way is sight down uh, from a distance behind the lathe down the lead screw and see if it looks parallel. Want to make sure the cutter is touching the wood. We're going to loosen any locking mechanism on the cross level. We're going to then back this out so it's outside the wood. Now we've got to make an, make an adjustment either inward or backward to, to put the cutter uh, for the right distance of the thread. Now I'm cutting 16 threads per inch so I'm going to cut at a depth of 0 .035 inches uh, so I need to move the cutter uh, move the jig into the cutter so to do that I'm going to adjust this cross level vice knob and move this. Uh, I'm going to cut three-fourths uh, and then take another pass. Then I'm going to tighten this up, and and uh, and, and we're just going to cut a couple of uh, trial threads to see how they look. You want to turn this thing up as just about as fast as it'll go, 25 to 3500. You want to keep your left hand on the chuck to help stabilize it as you turn the lead screw. I've got a small knob, so I'm going to grab something to make it just a little bit easier to turn. Think of this thing like a router. Faster is better. You just ease the cutter in. It doesn't make a great deal of difference how fast you go. So I'd say take it easy. Turn at a comfortable speed. Check it out, see how those threads look. Now, the threads look pretty good. They're forming, it looks like, evenly on both sides. They're a little bit flat. I've got to cut a little deeper. Uh, sometimes it helps to, to kind of relax the wood, and one way to do that is adding a little bit of mineral oil. So I'm going to do that. Some people use wax. Now, some people ask the question, is that you better cutting on the inside or the other side. Frankly, I'm not sure it makes a lot of difference. Uh, if you cut on this this side, uh, it has a tendency not to unwind the chuck. If you have it on a back side, it, has, it, it could possibly unwind the chuck, but I find that to be low risk as long as you're holding on to it and, and it's tight. Now one of the advantages of having it on the 
on the other side is it tends to be a little easier to free this around to check the uh, uh, check the threads okay now we've got just a little on here back it all the way out now I'm going to move this another I think another two notches there's a certain slop in this so I've got a just kind of approximate. As long as I get the the threads that look pretty good, I'm not getting too hung up on the on the uh, uh, the actual measurement. I can both hear, hear and feel when the cutter goes into the recess in the back because it, it'll quit cutting. Some people cut uh, both in and then they turn around and thread uh, cutting out. I'm not sure it makes a lot of difference one way or the other. I like to stop it when it goes into the recess and then back it out uh, with the lathe off like this. Now once I have this cleared, I can go ahead and... Uh, loosen the banjo and I can swing this around so we can see what it looks like and using a toothbrush or, or a brass detail brush we can see what these threads look like you want them just a bit flat and I think they're not quite deep enough so I'm gonna have to swing this back in now here's here's how you can the, the lead screw gives it the actual registration into the groove uh, so all I've got to do is move it in and then go back and touch touch the wood once I touch the wood I'm right back where I where I started from I'm gonna tighten this up I'm gonna back this out and I'm going to cut it about one more quarter of a turn it all depends on your particular jig and the settings. Okay, I'm happy with these threads. They've got uh, uh, they're they're cut cut crisp and clean. Uh, if they're a little too sharp, you can always take some 400 uh, sandpaper and lightly knock off the sharp edges because they'll have a tendency to crumble. So you want them just just a bit bit flat. You don't want them to as sharp as they can be. Now here's here's the critical step. You're going to measure the inside of the recess and add some amount for the tenon to make it larger in order to cut the threads. As you can see from this diagram, it's logical to think that since you've got a half a thread depth on this side and a half a uh, thread depth on, on this side, that if you put the two together, that's how large it would be. That doesn't work out that way. You need to make it a little smaller. So I'm cutting these threads about 0.035 you double that would be 0 .07 but that winds up typically being too large so you zero out the calipers now you can either write this number down but I find it easier to then zero out the calipers and then add that extra dimension and I'm going to give myself just a little extra leeway because I can always cut the threads uh, smaller then I'm going to lock this and I'm in good shape. Now, dial calipers also work. I prefer the digital because it's, I just find it easier for me to read. But you can do the same thing with these once you get it measured with these. You can then lock it and in effect zero it out by turning this, this ring To zero, loosen it, and then add the additional the additional amount to make it larger. That way, you really don't have to do a whole lot of math. And then that's the that's that's what you use to size the uh, the exterior thread. This is when it would be nice to have actually uh, uh, have this set up on a a mini lathe so you can uh, do any. Uh, shaping of the box on this lathe. Now I've got to completely dismantle this. I've got to take this off. I've got
got to take my cutter off. You can see why I prefer this as to not having a draw bar and it's easier to take on and off although it did take up a little more room with this collar so uh, there are there are are benefits of using the smaller collet. Okay I have the I have sized the tenon properly now I'm just going to take just a, a bit of a chamfer about 45 degrees using my point tool To keep when the threads enter, they are less likely to uh, be too sharp and crumble. Now I've got to make a little recess back here. I'm going to use this, uh, a uh, 16th inch parting tool and take one and a half parts. Because I'm cutting 16 threads per inch. Now we've got to take this down and set the jig back again and start threading. So now we go through the process of setting up the jig again. Again you can see how luxurious it would be if we had two, two lathes. Now as before I'm going to take a little, a little mineral oil. And put just a just a dab on it. Just soften that wood a little bit. Relax it. And as a general rule of thumb, I prefer to cut on the back side because I, I like uh, the comfort of having a piece of wood between me and the cutter. But that's just kind of a personal personal preference. Now again, we're going to uh, step behind the lathe and. and and make sure this is lined up. As before we want to bring up the cutter it just barely touched the wood. Turn it, make sure it feels like it's it's in pretty good contact. Then we're going to back it out far enough away. Now we can go ahead and set the, the depth of the, the thread. And I look for a three quarters uh, depth of how deep the final thread is going to be to make a trial run. Now here's where we do a trial fit. I'm going to release this the banjo and this should just easily be able to swing around. Now we use our toothbrush to kind of clear it a little bit. It's not as important how the threads look as how they fit. So these have got some definite flats look like they could probably be cut a little thinner but I want to do a trial fit. So I take the female threads and just see how it works out. And these feel very good. They, they slide on easily. They've got some room for wood movement. You'd want to err on the side of looseness. So I'm going to call that good. Now we reverse the operation again. We take this, take the box off the threading jig. We 
and we transfer it back to the lathe. Take off the jig. Now, we know this fits. I'm going to go ahead and take it off the chuck. I'm going to take the lid off chuck. Now, this is not a box making class. If you want to see me uh, making an acorn box, uh, click on the icon above and I've got a two part vi video. I just want to show the, the general process. So now we shape the lid, and the easiest way to use a jam chuck for the lid is actually use the base. And you can see my witness mark I've got. Here's yeah, here's the wood mark, here's the wood mark. They're not too far apart. I believe they'll almost tighten up uh, after I shape this. So I need to figure out how. I need to transfer the inside to the outside. And then shape the bottom of the box. Then I'm going to use a jam chuck or a, a threaded jam chuck to reverse the box uh, in order to finish off the, the bottom. Okay, I know y'all are interested in seeing what the final box looks like, so I'm going to show you a couple of close-ups of that. If, uh, if these, I hope these tips are helpful if it's encouraged you to think about a, a jig and you're thinking about whether you want to make or buy one. Uh, I've got a link to a video on, on make or buy decision whether you use hand thread chasers or a jig. If you're more interested in details on making an acorn box, I'll have a link to that here as well. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.